Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Rizwanullah. I hope you are doing well. Today, I'd, first of all, I'd like to thank you because our channel has reached to 1,000 sub plus subscribers. Uh, secondly, we are very much close to 50,000 views. So again, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to explain the morphology of the maxillary second premolar. So these are the maxillary second premolars. This is the maxillary second premolar of the right side and this is of the left side. These teeth basically they replaces the maxillary second deciduous second molars. These teeth emerge into the oral cavity at the age of 10 to 12 years and the root completion of these teeth is around the age of 12 to 14 years. The maxillary second premolars, these are the maxillary second premolars. So in general, the maxillary second premolars, they are less angular as compared to the first premolars. The, usually, the maxillary second premolar has a single root. So you can see these teeth have a single root. These are the models of the maxillary second premolars. This is the maxillary second premolar of the right side and this is the model of the maxillary second premolar of the, right, of the left side. The buccal cusp, this is the buccal cusp of the maxillary second premolar. So the buccal cusp is less pointed, you can see it is less pointed if you compare it with the uh, maxillary first premolar or if you compare it with the canine. The cusp is also shorter as compared to the teeth that are present anterior to this premolar. The mesial slope, this is the mesial slope, this is the mesial cuspal slope of the tooth. So the mesial slope of the buccal cuspal ridge is shorter as compared to the distal cuspal slope. So this cuspal slope is larger, the distal cuspal slope is larger while the, buc while the mesial cuspal slope is shorter. The buccal ridge, this is the buccal ridge. So the buccal ridge of the second premolar is less well developed. So it is not as prominent if you, if you compare it with the first premolar. So this is the root that has a conical appearance. But at the pical one third, this portion is the pical one third. At the pical one third, the root curves in a distal direction. This is the palatal aspect. The palatal cusp is long, so the buccal cusp or any part of the occlusal surface is not visible from this aspect. There is greater root length as compared to the first premolar. The palatal cusp is slightly displaced towards the mesial aspect. Small part of the mesial and the distal surface is visible from the palatal aspect because of less convergence of this tooth on the palatal aspect. This is the mesial aspect. From the mesial aspect you can see the buccal and the palatal cusp they are shorter and both the cusps are nearly at the same level. There is a greater distance between the buccal and the palatal cusp and this widens the occlusal table buccopalatally. No developmental depression is present on the mesial marginal ridge or on the crown surface. The surface of the crown is convex. A shallow developmental line is present on the mesial surface. Otherwise, the mesial surface of the root is also smooth. This is a distal aspect which is very much similar to that of the mesial aspect. The cervical occlusal crown the cervical occlusal length of the crown is slightly less, so some part of the occlusal surface is visible. In addition to that, you can see this is the developmental depression that you can see on the root surface. So this is a developmental depression that is present on the distal surface of the root. This is the occlusal aspect. This is the buccal cusp and this is the palatal cusp. The outline of the maxillary second premolar is more oval in shape 
as compared to the first premolar which has angular appearance. This is the central developmental groove which is very short plus the central developmental groove it do not cross the mesial marginal ridge so the mesial marginal ridge is smooth. The buccopilatal dimension on the mesial side is more as compared to the distal side. There are several developmental depressions, there are several developmental grooves that are radiating from the, uh, from the central developmental depression that gives the occlusal surface a wrinkled appearance. This is the transverse ridge. So this is one triangular ridge and this is another triangular ridge from the palatal cusp and it forms a transverse ridge.